please welcome Miley Cyrus. Thank you. All right. What an epic night to be a part of. Thank you guys so much. Um, I'm going to start off this induction with the first time I wanted to have sex with Joan Jett. And uh, we were doing Oprah together, and I go up to Joan's hotel room, and Joan opens the door, and I come in, and Kenny Laguna is laying in bed. And I don't know what the fuck is going on. There are, there's towels shoved underneath all the door cracks, shower caps around all the smoke detectors. Joan is running around spraying orange smell cleaner to mask the spell of the, of the pot, that's what you guys call it. And uh, we go into her bathroom, and um, the show was where new artists got to perform with their idols, and, and I wanted to perform with Joan, of, of course. And um, we were in her bathroom, and we were smoking, and we were just talking. And this was one of the moments in my life where I wanted to be as present and absorb everything that she said to me. I listened to her talk about her days with the Runaways. She talked about music. She talked about why she loves animals and she doesn't want to eat them. We're not going to eat the animals. And um, I was getting to have this moment with someone that to me is superwoman. What superwoman really should be. And at first, having this honor to induct Joan Jett into the legendary Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, it was overwhelming. There was so much that I could say and she has had a life in music that is rare. She's had a career decades long. She's been the first to do many things, and not just as a woman, but just as a badass being on the planet. But this one story, this one story is my favorite. So on one trip, Joan went to entertain the troops in Turkey in the Middle East, and Joan was traveling with the Secretary of Air Force, and Joan had requested a trip to Jerusalem while she was playing on the USS Bataan in the harbor of Haifa. And not acquainted with the culture and all covered up in jackets. It was a cold day and she was looking kind of androgynous. Joan accepted a yarmulke from one of the guards and she went over to the men's side of the wailing wall to make a prayer. And just as Joan noticed a bunch of other women at another part of the wall, Joan's Israeli colonel assigned to the trip appeared freaking out and screaming at Kenny, international incident. And uh, the American Marines watching this were getting ready to protect Joan from the Orthodox worshipers who would try to exact retribution if they knew about the transgression. So everyone agreed to never speak about this, sorry, to anyone, <laughs> and uh, swore that Joan was the only woman to ever stick a prayer in the men's side of the Wailing Wall since Israel was a nation, and maybe even centuries before that. Fucking badass. But. She was also the first major, major female artist to start her own record label, and that's only because all the other labels said that there wasn't a market for that kind of music. And Kenny Laguna, I want to say something to you. I want to say that you're a fucking genius, and this is why. Because when 23 record labels were saying no, you started Blackheart Records together with Joan, by the way, using his daughter's college savings, selling records out of the back of your Cadillac, and it takes someone like you that believes in the music, but more than that, believes in us as people and as human beings. And you two are an unconventional and unconditional kind of love. And what you guys have is what all of us should look for in the people that we spend our lives and our valuable time here on the earth with. People in this room are probably married to people they love less than you guys love each other. And uh, I'm honored to be a part of your life. I'm also honored to induct the Blackhearts tonight, Lee Crystal, Ricky Bird, and Gary Ryan. And um, so I want to bring everyone up right now, but I do want to say one final story about when I knew that I loved Joan so fucking much. And um, this shit kind of fucks me up because this was a day that she was dedicating her time to an upcoming project for my foundation and it was supporting the LGBT homeless youth. She was running around my backyard. She was with my dogs, playing with my pig. And I played the Tibetan bowls for her and at sunset, and Kenny and Joan, they sang along with these bowls. 
And this relationship seems so different than the one only five or six years ago smoking pot in Oprah's bathroom or wherever the fuck we were at a hotel. Oprah was paying for it. It wasn't her bathroom, but she paid for it. And um, I, now, I now looked at her less of a deity, but now I have this connection. And I have this connection with her that she can be a guide for me. And growing up, my dad always kept me around music, and I spent a lot of time with all different artists. But I don't think, I know there isn't one other person on this planet that's been an inspiration to me like you have. And um, Joan's music, her activism, who she is. And in all of our lives, all of us will experience people who are gonna try to tell us who to be and what to be. Fuck those people. Joan has been an example of what you can achieve and the happiness, which is more important that you can have. If instead of changing for other people, if you don't like how the world is, change it yourself. She made the world evolve. Her life and her success is proof that we can't stop evolving. And I wanna thank you for fighting for our freedom, Joan, and I love you so much. And it really is my honor to be the one inducting you and the Black Hearts into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Get up here, come on. I first want to thank the amazing Steve Van Zandt for being our friend and advocate. And let me say, by the time I was 16, I had a record deal and was on the charts with bubblegum music. By the time I was 19, I was a has-been loading boxes a million miles from the record business. But thanks to Peter Meaden, I started the next chapter. For some reason, the British punks loved bubblegum and I spent most of the 70s in London, wearing a cape and sitting behind a console. I want to thank Bill Kerbishley, Steve Lieber, and Matthew King Kaufman for lifting me up when I fell. Toby Mamus had a vision. He wanted me to meet Joan Jett and help finish the final Runaways tracks. I didn't see the point, but Merrill, my partner in business and life, said she'd been reading about Joan and thought she was going to be significant. Without Merrill's encouragement, that seminal moment would not have happened. Thank you, Merrill. Joan walked into the room at the riot house, and I just said, wow, what is this? She was strong, talented, and musically self-possessed. Joan is the purest person you could ever meet. She walks it like she talks it. No separate public persona and private persona. Just the real deal, 24-7. Joan Jett is rock and roll. <laughs> my daughter Carrie Ann, my daughter Carrie Ann joined the family business 12 years ago. She has taken our company into a new era of prosperity and relevancy that continues to grow. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, you know, it's hard, I'm off the script, but the girls don't get the credit they need and in our business. I, I want to shout out to my roots, Anderson Poncia, Artie Rip, Morris Levy, Pete Townsend, Roger Daltrey, Eddie O, Howie, Sandy, and Marty from Jamie Americans, Neil and Joyce Bogart, Tommy James, everyone Blackheart, past and present. I want to emphasize that Joan is the true rock star here. And I believe that at 16, she was on a path to the Hall of Fame before I ever met her. I'm just glad I can stand with my best friend and collaborator after all these years and celebrate this achievement. Thank you to the Hall of Fame for this honor. It means a lot. Thank you.
tough, but that, that, that's a little overwhelming there. Thank you very much. Miley, thanks so much for your words and taking the time to come here for me. You have such a beautiful soul, and it's been really wonderful getting to know you over these past few years. It's important to see another strong woman who does things her way, and, and she does. First off, I really want to acknowledge my parents, Jim and Dottie, who can only be with us in spirit, which I know they are. Hey, Mom and Dad, did you ever think that Christmas guitar would lead to this? But I miss them and love them so much. And my brother and sister, Jim and Ann, I love you. I come from a place where rock and roll means something. It means more than music, more than fashion, more than a good pose. It's the language of a subculture that has been made eternal teenagers of all who follow it. It's a subculture of integrity, rebellion, frustration, alienation, and the glue that sets several generations free of unnatural societal and self-suppression. Yeah. Rock and roll is political. It is a meaningful way to express dissent, upset the status quo, stir up revolution, and fight for human rights. Do you think I'm making it sound more important and more serious than it is? It's only rock and roll, right? Rock and roll is an idea and an ideal. Sometimes, because we love the music and we make the music, we forget the political impact it has on people around the world. There are pussy riots wherever there is political agitation. We become so conditioned to measuring our music's impact in dollar signs only that we can forget what it's really about. The music, emotion, expression, giving a voice to those who aren't satisfied fitting into whatever box they were given. Rock and roll ethic is my entire life, and I'm thankful to all the people along the way that let me be me. When I was 16, I met Kim Fowley and Sandy West. I took four buses to get to Sandy's house so we could jam in her rec room. And then we called Kim on the phone and played him some songs, and the Runaways were formed that day, August 5th, 1975. We lost Sandy a few years ago, and Kim just a few months ago in January. And if Kim were still with us, he'd be here, sitting at my table, and probably taking bows on this occasion, rightfully so. Thank you, Kim. Because if, if we did nothing else but write Cherry Bomb, it would have been great. But we made some history. Thanks to my co-conspirator, Sandy, and all the runaways who shared this unique an unrivaled perspective of rock and roll. Mickey, Cherie, Lita, Jackie, Vicky, Laurie, and Peggy, and our dedicated and hard-working road crews. Yeah. And after the Runaways, I met Kenny Laguna to work on a previous project that I had committed to. And his wife, Meryl, had encouraged Kenny to meet with me as she had read about me and thought I was significant. And they decided to manage me. Every label turned me down, saying I should lose the guitar or just they didn't hear any hits. We started Blackheart Records with their baby Carrie Ann's college fund and pressed our own records. And I Love Rock and Roll went to number one. Thank you. And Blackheart is now 35 years old, and it's a growing entertainment company headed by the same Carrie Ann, whose college fund was its seed money. <laughs> it's karma. Yeah. She has reinvented Blackheart, but has kept our mission alive. Thank you, Carrie Ann, and thank you, Mel. When I met Kenny Laguna, I found a best friend, 
a writing partner, a bandmate, a producer, a manager, and a soulmate. In a business not known for loyalty, we've been together for over three decades. We share music, we share business, we share credit. I've been so lucky to have his friendship, and I want to acknowledge his amazing contribution to my career. Thank you, Kenny. Yeah, in, in London, at the start of my solo career, Pete Townsend said to Kenny and me, go see Bill, you don't have to pay us now. Bill Kerbishley and The Who let us record at their Ramport Studios. It was all magic, the work, the scene, the creativity. This gave us the ability to build the buzz and mystique that is so critical to rock and roll without anyone's interference. Kenny reached out to his friends Neil and Joyce Bogart to help put out our record. And despite the rejections from pretty much every label at the time, there were some incredible early believers that helped get us started, like Howard Bloom, Toby Mamus, Steve Leeds, Steve Lieber, Eddie O'Loughlin, Tom Cuddy, Tony Martell, Ian Copeland and his agency, FBI, who are revolutionary. The FBI guys like John Huey, who still is our agent, and Rick Shore worked hard for us, and I'll never forget. There have been so many people along the way that have been advocates and friends throughout my career. I want to thank little Steven and Dave Grohl. They've been such strong supporters. Kathleen Hanna and Adam Horowitz. Thanks. Thanks to Lemmy and Motorhead. The Foo Fighters. Nirvana, Dave Patton Christ, that same Iggy Pop, Rodney Bingenheimer, Debbie, Chris, and Blondie, the Ramones, Alice Cooper, Roger Daltrey and Pete Townsend, Cheap Trick, Ian Mackay, Fugazi, and Discord Records. My fellow inductees, Green Day, Billy Joe Armstrong, Mike Dunn and Trey Cool, the band X, Robert Plant, Darlene Love, all the Riot girls out there, Stephen, Joe, and Aerosmith, The Replacements, Mike Ness and Social Distortion, Mick Taylor, and so many others, Rob Light, Rod Essick, and CAA, thank you. Thanks to Kristen Foster and PMK. Thanks to our lawyers, Oren, Jason, and David, Thanks to Michelle Fayetta, Howard Krant. Thank you, Elliot Saltzman, for all your hard work and coordination tonight and since 1980. Julie Rader, Carol Kamen, Cookie, Elise Indry, Paul O'Neill, Mike Winter, Steve Hobble, Mike Bridey, Mark Bridey, Mark Dodson, Carol Kay, on all past and certainly our present team at Blackheart Records, Max, Gabe, Hubert, Caroline, Curtis, Davey, and Cynthia. Thanks to all the Blackhearts throughout the years, especially the great Tommy Price, who for 32 years has been the heartbeat, the pulse, the roaring propulsion of this band. Tommy should have been inducted with us tonight, and I want to recognize him in front of you all now. Once again, Tommy. Love you, man. But also Tony Bruno, Eric Amble, Chasm Sultan, A.C. Slade, the Uptown Horns, Tom Panunzio, and my fellow inductees, Ricky, Gary, and Lee, via Mara. And of course, the current Blackhearts, Tommy, Kenny, Dougie Needles, and Hal Seltzer, and my crew, Billy Crater, Ed Sargent, Zach Nagy, Brandon Southern, Annie, and Beef. I want to thank the Hall of Fame, Joel Perezman, Alex Coletti, Lisa Testa, Betsy Hill, John Landau, and Jan Wenner. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much.